The Algoma, Wisconsin Sturgeon Bay area is one of the best sport fishing destinations for king salmon on Lake Michigan. This facility, the Strawberry Creek Salmon Spawning Facility, is a key ingredient. Let's go find out why. Folks, this is Neil Rosenberg. He's the operations manager here at the Weir. And Neil, the main reason why this facility is here in the first place is that Lake Michigan is really not a self-sustaining fishery, correct? That's correct, yep. All right, so what the facility here is doing is? Well, since the uh, late 60s, early 70s, we've collected salmon here and we've spawned them and then hauled the hatchery, uh, eggs back to the hatchery. Okay. So. And here we have a, a holding pond? The fish that you see right here in the pond today are three, four-year-old fish. They were actually raised here three, four years ago as small fingerlings. And then three, four years later, they'll come back here because they imprinted on this water. Wow, so. okay. And so what your facility you're doing here is you're collecting the salmon that were here four years ago. Yep. And you're basically getting the eggs. Yep, this is quite a process here. Uh, the first salmon, the first Chinook salmon in the state of Wisconsin were actually stocked here in the late 60s. Well, Neil, why don't you just walk us through the process? Sure. Once we crowd them down to this end of the pond, then uh, we use this basket back here, and we lower that down, and we crowd the fish into the basket. We bring it up. We lower it down into this tank, which is a knockout tank. We have CO2 bubbling in there, and it'll anesthetize the fish. We'll give them maybe three, four, or five minutes in there. Then we bring them up. They're just a little easier to handle. As you can see, uh, the basket gets opened up. The we still have to anesthetize some of the fish so we can handle them, but from here, as you can see the scale down there, the measuring board, yep. we'll start sending the fish down there. This is where all the data information is collected. 852. The fish actually comes up on this scale. It's being weighed right now, and he's also getting the length on it. So we're also looking for uh, any type of invasive damage on these fish caused by lampreys. Looking for lamprey scars. We're looking for fin clips, also getting weights and measurements on them. From here, he's taking a male. What these guys are doing is they're grabbing, one person's in charge of uh, extracting uh, milk from the male, and then uh, the other gentleman is, is also spawning the females here, and you'll see it's quite a process. He'll uh, hang them up. Air is actually injected into the, the cavity to blow the, the eggs out. So if you would cut that fish open and try to get the eggs out, there's, there'd be a chance of, of rupturing the eggs. And so we're, we're looking for quality here. This seems to be the best method that we found. So on average, how many eggs will a female, a typical female hold? This year, the eggs seem a little larger, so they're running about 5,000 eggs on average per female. Wow. So it's a lot of eggs. You collect a lot of eggs in this facility. <laughs> yeah. Like today, maybe the hatchery will, they're looking for about 400,000 eggs maybe today. We try to take eggs throughout the run. We don't want to take all the eggs in the beginning, all the eggs in the end. We want to get a good genetic um, sample of eggs. So. so we see now we're harvesting the eggs. Now what happens to the fish? Well, basically we have two two avenues right now. We have food pantry fish, anything under 36 inches, and it looks decent. You know, we don't want to throw a fish in there that's been dead or beat up, obviously. We have about five food pantries that benefit from the fish that we collect here. The fish that are in this uh, container go to a company that grinds them up for liquid fertilizer. So nothing goes to waste. No waste at all. No. And you're doing a good deed by feeding the hungry. Sure. Yeah, it's good protein. There's nothing wrong with that. That's terrific. In this station here, as you can see, he's pouring the milk into the eggs. Yes, I don't know if you can see that. Basically stirs it with his hand. So we'll let this process about two minutes. We'll let that sit in here. And right now these eggs are being fertilized. All right. So Cool. So you've taken the, the female eggs, the male milk, mixed them together, Combine and now them, we're yep. fertilizing the eggs and we're yep, two hoping, males, hoping for two a little females. salmon down the road. That's right. <laughs> Basically right now, Todd's good taking these eggs that have sat for two minutes. And we have to wash them off. You know, you've got dead, dead sperm on there, dead milk. Some of the eggs have ruptured, let's say. So it's basically a cleaning process. We got fresh water here, and he's rinsing all those eggs off. Um, if he did not rinse those off, they would get real gelatinous, and they would stick together, and they would clump together. And so as you can see, a lot of foam, a lot of ruptured eggs coming out. And these are where the eggs, actually, they have to water harden. You wouldn't want to transport these eggs immediately. You want them to water harden, I would say two hours, they're gonna be in here, water hardening. And they, the guys down here just keep track of the time. So Neil, once the eggs harden, what happens then? 
Well, the eggs harden, they go into coolers. They get di disinfected first. We disinfect everything with iodine here. The eggs are disinfected just because we don't want to take a virus that's right here in Strawberry Creek back to a hatchery. And we've been testing here for the last, since 2007, and we have not detected VHS, but we want to be safe. So we disinfect the eggs, we put them in coolers, we transport them back to Wild Rose Hatchery, and from there they get disinfected again in a biosecurity room, and then they get put out on hatching trays. But once we, uh, once the eggs hatch back to hatchery, they actually rear them, they feed them there, and then next spring, 175, 200,000 will actually come back here to this facility and be reared for a couple months, fed here as they imprint on the water. And how many total will you be collecting or, or hopefully hatching? Well, they will hatch just over a million eggs there at wow. Wild Rose. And so what happens to the rest of the fish? Well, we stock those out in other harbors. So okay. those fish go directly to the, the lake. That's an amazing process. So Neil, this facility is in direct relation to people sport fishing buying salmon stamps. That's correct. Anybody that fishes Great Lakes has to have a salmon stamp, and then port, you know that money does come back to a facility just like this to operate it and keep it going. So, How else can people help? Uh, you know, we had a lot of volunteers. Even at this facility today, we have some volunteers here. Uh, we have a lot of school groups, a lot of students, university students want to help us out here. Um, Another way is a lot of times sportsmen's clubs want to help us out, support us, so we'll set up a gift account if they want to help us through monetary donations, we can work and, that way. And too. how can they find out more information? Uh, basically on the DNR website, Wisconsin DNR website, um, you go to fisheries link and you can pull up brochures, like this facility is called Strawberry Creek, get a brochure and there's contact information on the bottom of that. But. Terrific. Well, I want to thank you for the tour this morning. You bet. Appreciate your help. Folks, Midwest Outdoors, we'll be right back. I'm Larry Ladowski, and we'll catch you later.